Would you have survived in Yellowstone? At first glance, the answer seems obvious. Of course. What dangers can be hiding in a USA national park? But what if I tell you that at least 51 people die in the park every year? And now and then, Yellowstone gets mentioned among America's most dangerous parks. Still sure you're gonna be the lucky one who will manage to survive? Well, let's take a look at the dangers awaiting for you in Yellowstone Park. Hot Springs. Doesn't sound that scary, huh? After all, some tourists pay a pretty penny to visit Japanese baths in the open air and enjoy the warm waters of the springs. So what makes Yellowstone worse? The park has the biggest collection of hot springs, geysers, mud pots, and fumaroles. There are more than 10,000 hydrothermal springs and half of the world's geysers, more than 500. They are all scattered on the park's 3,472 square mile area. Some of the geysers are so hot that diving into one of them would be like swimming in accumulator acid. The temperature there can reach up to 198 degrees Fahrenheit, while steam lakes can reach 275 Fahrenheit in temperature. These temperatures differ significantly from the other hot springs in the country. For example, springs in Arkansas, one of the most popular in the US, have a temperature of around 148 degrees Fahrenheit. For more than 200 years, these waters have welcomed six sports people wandering celebrities and veterans, whereas Yellowstone hot springs pose a deadly threat to humans. What is the reason for such an unusual quantity of hot springs in their temperature? The thing is, Yellowstone lies on top of a massive volcano with such an enormous depository of magma that its eruption can harm the whole continent. Still, scientists do not expect this to happen for the next couple thousand years. Wandering near the springs is not just dangerous. Such a hike can turn out to be deadly. In really wild places, like Mammoth Hot Springs, the fragile soil can easily collapse under the weight of an average person. And the water temperature can reach up to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So it can easily melt your shoe soles and cause a third degree burn. Lee Whittlesey, the park historian, held a special investigation for his book, Death in Yellowstone, Accidents and Foolhardiness in the First National Park, where he looked through the archives to find examples of deadly accidents for his book. So, what are your bets? How many people were careless enough to step into a boiling puddle or to rush to swim in a dangerous place? In truth, the scope of such tragedies is much greater than we can imagine, because only one investigation took a couple of years, and the chronology of disasters spans decades. Since 1890, the casualty count has been around 20 people. But what kind of situations were those? The first tragedy in the region's history likely happened in 1870. The injured was a member of the Washburn Langford Doan Expedition. The group of explorers were cataloging the park. That is, they were taking notes, making drawings, and documenting the peculiarities of the terrain. They were the ones who named the powerful geyser in the upper part of the caldera Old Faithful. With time, the group decided to split up. But one of the explorers, Truman Everts, immediately got lost and couldn't find his way back. He spent 37 days roaming in the wilderness. When Everts was found, he had a thigh burn which he had gotten near Lake Hart while trying to warm himself in a nearby hot spring. Everts was lucky enough to have survived, and in the end, he managed to return home. At that time, the region did not have a national park status, so when its title officially changed, that must have meant that there would be fewer deaths and injuries, right? Because the area's new status would have forced the park representatives to outline clear safety rules and ensure they're being followed. Instead, the data shows that after the territory was turned into a national park, accidents started happening more and more often. And in the 1880s, at least four more people got injured, including a senator from New York. In his book, Whittlesey also notices that children often get into accidents near the hot springs. The first death in what was already a national park 
can arguably be attributed to 1890. It was James Joseph Stumbo, a seven-year-old boy from Montana, who fell into a hot spring during a visit to the park. The last documented accident was a 13-year-old teenager's fall into a hot spring in 2016. Luckily, the boy managed to survive, but was badly burned. In June of 1970, nine-year-old Andy Hecht died after falling off a wooden plank walkway into a boiling pool of water. Some witnesses noted that the boy ran and jumped into the pool consciously, but others maintained that he tripped and fell over the walkway edge possibly after a pillar of hot steam hit him in the eyes, and frantically tried to swim his way out, but soon disappeared under the surface. His father, James Hecht, continued pressuring the U.S. government to prevent further accidents. He sued the U.S. National Park Service. The man testified before a Senate subcommittee, accusing the park's management of failing to properly warn the visitors of dangers. He also urged the park to install fences around every hot spring. His lawsuit was settled out of court for $20,000. And even though some fences were eventually put up, a lot of walkways are still without barriers. In the case of such accidents, the families are very lucky if the victims' bodies can be identified. In July 2022, the park rangers were trying to find the body of a man who had fallen into a hot spring the previous day. He turned out to be 70-year-old Il Hun Ro from Los Angeles. Adverse weather conditions interfered with the search. Finally, in mid-August, the rangers managed to find the remains of a foot and a shoe in the Abyss Pool Hot Springs. A DNA test proved that it belonged to Il Hun Ro. According to the most recent version of events, the man fell into the water and couldn't get out, as the water temperature in the pool reached up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Sadly, the remaining body parts could not be found. But the most gruesome of all the deaths in Yellowstone Hot Springs is the case of David Kirwan, a 24-year-old guy from California. On July 20th, 1981, his friend's dog, Moosey, jumped into Celestine Pool, a spring where the water temperature was 202 degrees Fahrenheit. Seeing that the dog was in pain, Kirwan prepared to jump don't go in there, shouted a passerby. But Kirwan didn't listen and jumped headfirst into the water. But when he reached the dog, his body was paralyzed due to severe burns and painful shock. The guy died the following morning in the hospital due to high degree burns. And this is only the list of the few accidents we know of. Although the rangers have been installing warning signs near the park's hot springs since 1888, those signs have often been ignored. Still, despite the danger, indigenous peoples have been utilizing the waters of these thermal springs for centuries. Whittlesey says there are no records of injuries or deaths of native people's representatives in these hot springs, although it might have happened. Before the arrival of the Europeans in the 19th century, according to the official history of the park, the local tribes had been using hydrothermal waters for medical and religious purposes for centuries and the Kiowa tribe considered the Dragon's Mouth spring near Mud Volcano to be the place where their creator gave them the Yellowstone area as home. Yes, high temperatures can be deadly for humans, but some organisms are very well adapted to the hot temperatures and, more than that, cannot live without them. You might have noticed that the colors of some hot springs look a bit unusual. Their banks are yellow or even red, contrasting the turquoise color of the water. This happens due to the accumulation of thermophiles. The microorganisms, also called the lovers of heat, live in Yellowstone's thermal waters. Even though each of them is too small to be seen with the naked eye, they group in the park springs by the trillions. That's why they often look like colorful rugs. These microorganisms also bear the name of extremophiles, as they live in environments with extreme conditions. Imagine living in near boiling water with alkalinity close to that of baking soda, or conversely, with acidity that can burn holes in your clothes. Not only do Yellowstone microorganisms live in such conditions, they require such extremes to thrive. So the entirety of nature and microflora of the springs, including their vibrant colors, virtually screams at the visitors, 
Keep away from me. All right, you will say. I don't like swimming anyway, so why should I care about those hot springs? If that's Yellowstone's only danger, then I'm gonna be just fine. But don't get your hopes too high just yet. Because Yellowstone is also home to one of the most dangerous animals, the grizzly bear. Since the park was founded, they have killed eight people. These animals pose the third deadliest danger after hot springs and drowning. In developed areas in the 1930s to 1950s, approximately one person a year was injured by a bear on average. But the statistics rose to four injuries a year during the 1960s. In the 1970s, grizzly bear inflicted injuries in developed areas dropped to one injury every two years. Since 1980, there have only been two injuries caused by grizzly bears in developed areas, on average around once every 20 years. In the same time frame, 34 grizzly bear-induced injuries have been recorded in rural areas. That makes roughly one attack per year. And although this statistic is meant to be heartening, when we recall the details of the bear's attacks on humans, we wouldn't test our luck, especially since in Yellowstone, it's definitely not on your side. On August 13th, 1967, Patrol Ranger Bert Gildert was descending from the highest mountain pass in the Glacier National Park when he heard a man's voice on his radio receiver. It was another ranger, Leonard Landa, and he had a horrible message. A grizzly bear had mauled someone in the popular guest chalet called Granite Park. Gildert called for help, starting an emergency medical mission. After they reached the camping site and scattered around its territory, Gildert recalls Landa whispering, Bert, here she is. A mutilated young woman's body had to be flown out in a helicopter. After a few hours, when Gildert was sleeping in his room in the park's headquarters, a colleague knocked on his door. He told Bert that he needed to get ready because there had been a grizzly bear attack. I know, replied Bert. No, there's been another one, answered his colleague. In 2017, Gildert, who was 77 years old at the time, still recalled these events as mind-boggling, and for a good reason. At the time of the tragedy, since 1910, there had been no human deaths caused by a grizzly bear on record. And one night, two bears in places a few miles apart killed two tourists. Both victims, Julie Helgeson and Michelle Coons, who were only 19 years old. The reasons for the bears' attacks have spawned a lot of theories. Some blamed lightning and dry conditions that had provoked forest fires that week. The fire could have made one bear leave its usual abode and roam towards the Granite Park camping site. That's where the bear pulled Julie Helgeson out of the tent she'd been sleeping in. The other attack happened near Trout Lake, where Michelle Coons had set up a camp with her four friends. The attacks were so mystifying that the weirdest things were discussed as possible reasons. Some thought the bears attacked the women because they were both menstruating, and some people claimed that some prankster tourists had fed LSD to the bears. But not only young tourists can fall victim to a bear, it can also happen to experienced campers. In 2015, 63-year-old Lance Crosby from Billings was killed by a grizzly bear in Yellowstone National Park. The man worked for the company in charge of the park's emergency clinics. Crosby's body was found partly chewed on and torn. While examining his forearm wounds, the experts came to conflicted conclusions. It looked as if the bear had been attacking to protect itself. Then, these claims were refuted. The park's management informed the public that bear traps had been installed on the park's territory. One bear got caught. The park's representatives were looking for proof that the captured bear was the bear who had attacked Crosby, in which case the animal would have been put to sleep. This decision angered some of the park's workers. I have many issues with this story, as it's written on the Yellowstone Guidelines website in one of the employees' columns. Why was this experienced hiker by himself, without bear spray, in one of the most bear-rich areas of Yellowstone? This doesn't make any sense. The hiker should have had bear spray and been hiking in a group. Maybe it was arrogance, 
ignorance, or just the lack of common sense that put the hiker at risk. The column also reads that the female bear behind Lance Crosby's murder was called Blaze. She was an older female with two cubs. She was often spotted near Yellowstone Lake and Hayden Valley. The so bear's tolerance for humans allowed many visitors, photographers, and animal lovers to watch her in her natural habitat for years. It is stated in that same column that the female killed Lance, ate one of his body parts, and hid his remains for later. This behavior is predatory, not defensive. Had Blaze simply been trying to protect herself, she would have neutralized the threat in the form of Lance and walked off instead of tearing his body to pieces. Whatever the truth was, in March 2022, a grizzly bear was pronounced guilty of killing a tourist who had gone missing during a hike. The victim was identified as 40-year-old Craig Cluett from Livingston. No details were given about where he'd been found and why the bear was thought to be responsible for his death. It can be assumed that the sustained wounds and marks on the body, or what was left of it, did not give any reasons to look for other possible culprits. Although grizzly bears were and remain one of Yellowstone's central dangers, there are other animals in the park, the encounter with which might end in a catastrophe. For example, bison attacks, even though they happen much more rarely. Only in June of 2022, there were two such attacks on humans in three days. The first victim was a 71-year-old woman. She and her daughter inadvertently approached a bison while returning to their car. The U.S. National Park Service stated that this provoked the animal to charge at the poor woman. The victim was taken to the hospital, but she succumbed to her wounds. Another attack happened a few days later, when an enraged bison charged at a small group of tourists. The father barely managed to get his child out of the animal's way before it threw the man up into the air. The park's workers stated that later, he was transported to an Idaho hospital with an arm injury. Why do people, despite all of the aforementioned dangers, still keep visiting Yellowstone? The park retains its status as one of the best places for extreme tourism. It is the perfect option for those who love thrills and want to test their survival skills. But is it worth risking your life over? After all, visiting Yellowstone is like playing Russian roulette. The choice is up to you. What do you consider to be more dangerous in Yellowstone? Thermal springs or bears? Write your answers in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already and hit the like button.